elegy of the aftermath for Haiti. In the remains of Port-au-Prince, there was a girl with an extension of a smile, a wound fissured across her cheek, a face caked with the debris of her home. This is how to wear makeup in the third world. Every day she wakes up and watches men on TV who expect her to define the term natural disaster through a cavern full of blood. And somewhere, my sister and I are discussing language. How the creole on my tongue tires of flopping. We count the scales of dried words, and I try to explain why I like hip hop more than songs of ancestors. We think of all the relatives who have found graves under crumbled buildings. And the night terror ghost my grandfather's become, the rubble of an island nation resting in the valleys of his wrinkled skin. Mm -hmm. uh, the other day, Pat Robertson said that the Haitians deserve to have their homes destroyed. That when we were young, we danced with the devil, and that death was our punishment. All my friends were outraged, but I laughed. Wondered if Pat had ever learned anything from his father. It is hard to hate the devil when he's taught you how to fish. Oh. Oh. Before the earth's backbone shivered, the Caribbean was a pot of bubbling water and its people hemlock. No one asked to be born drenched in poverty's poison. Like no one asks to be born choking on golden spoons. For those without extensions of smiles, I understand the alchemy of your criticism. But for the men serving up their perception of disaster on the first world's plate, prior to making your meal, consider the catch. Why it stares at you like a child. Know that at some point we choose to be more net or hook. So forgive the steel finger curled in her jaw. There was metal in her mouth long before she could speak. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.